Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. There is an expression in English which is using the word anorak. Anorak. Now, as you probably know, an anorak is a piece of clothing. It's something which protects you from the rain. It's usually worn in the winter to protect you from harsh conditions. An anorak is usually a waterproof jacket. Usually it has a hood of some kind and it's used in really cold countries. An anorak. The difference between an anorak and a jacket is that anoraks are not usually very warm. I mean, they're big and they protect you from the rain and the snow, but you'd have to wear lots of jumpers under them. Whereas a jacket is usually quite thick and it keeps you warm. An anorak isn't always thick. Sometimes it is. But an anorak is the one with the zip that you pull up the middle. Anyway, in British English, an anorak is somebody who has a lot of knowledge which is not of use to anybody else on a particular subject. So, for example, people who like to take pictures of trains... They would be complete anoraks. I'm a bit of an anorak with radio. I love radio. I can sit for hours moving the dial around. I can tell you exactly where to find the BBC World Service at any time of the day, particularly their African service for some reason. Um, and also, uh, I could tell you about our local radio system. So that makes me a complete anorak. Anorak is kind of British slang, but it's mainstream now because everybody uses it. My friends, when they come to visit and they see all my radio equipment, they always say, oh, you really are a complete anorak with radio, aren't you? Uh, and I always reply, yes, that's not a bad thing. So anybody who has special information about a really weird thing, that makes them an anorak. Where did that come from? Well, it's interesting. I think it is actually about the clothing. Because people who go train spotting, they get up at all hours of the day and night in the middle of winter, they put on their anorak and they go outside. So this, uh, this piece of clothing slowly has become a way to describe someone who does these things. <laughs> so I'm a complete anorak when it comes to radio. Absolutely. I would get up at 2 a.m. if I thought there was a special broadcast from some radio station in the Arctic. Absolutely. By the way, speaking of radio stations in the Arctic, there is a there is a site on the internet called Radio Garden. And radio.garden, that's the website address, uh, hosts every internet radio station in the planet. When I say internet radio station, they're not actually internet radio, it's mainstream radio, which broadcast over the internet. Okay, so if you go to radio.garden, if you open it up, it will show you a big globe. And you can choose any radio station anywhere in the world. It's, it's fascinating. This uh, was a Dutch idea. It's a Dutch project operated, I think, by one of the Dutch uh, universities. For those of you who don't know, the Netherlands, or Holland, uh, has always been the leader for radio. I think the very first radio station came from there, from the Philips network back in the 1920s. 
and they've always been pioneering new ideas about radio. It's such a small country, but their contribution to media, particularly on the technical side, is amazing. Okay, so I'm just proving that I'm a complete radio anorak. Uh, so, yes, do check out that, uh, that site, radio.garden. It's amazing. You just choose a country, press the button, and it plays. Uh, good luck with that, because since Brexit, Radio Garden hasn't been available in the UK. That came as a bit of a shock one day when I turned on my computer, went to Radio Garden, and they have a message which says something like, sorry, but this site is no longer available in your country. So I quickly got my VPN out <laughs> so I could still use it. So Radio.Garden, yeah, it's very nice, it's very nice. In other news today, I see that Rolf Harris has died. Mm, death is always kind of sad, but uh, he was a disgraced entertainer. He was an Australian musician, singer, songwriter, uh, cartoonist. He was one of these people that managed to get children uh, involved in art. There was him and another one called Tony Hart. And they were TV artists, and we as children used to watch him taking a marker pen and creating beautiful images. Uh, so he's passed away. Unfortunately for him, uh, he um, did some bad things during his career. Uh, so uh, his death was withheld from the public for two weeks. Basically, you may have heard the name Jimmy Savile before. So Jimmy Savile was another kid's TV entertainer. And once he died, it was discovered that he had actually abused loads and loads of kids. Um, and he had access to children uh, in a way that other entertainers didn't have because he could visit hospitals and children loved him. And then they discovered that he was actually abusing loads of kids. But they didn't discover this until he died. So after he died, the police set up uh, an operation to try to catch other entertainers. And Rolf Harris, it was discovered, was another one. He was a TV artist, uh, a very interesting person. But behind that persona... He was also abusing children. And many, many people came forward to say, mm, Rolf Harris, yeah, he was really creepy. And uh, yeah, he, he was accused and convicted of groping and assaulting young children. So he went to jail, of course. Uh, and then when he died, no one told us that he was dead because they were worried that his funeral uh, would be interrupted. Because when Jimmy Savile uh, passed away, uh, no one knew about these allegations. But when the allegations of child abuse came up, people started to attack his grave. And people were insisting that his grave should be moved because they didn't want his grave anywhere in the cemetery. I don't know what they did with that in the end, whether they moved him, but uh, yeah, people were very, very angry. And so it's the same with Rolf Harris, you know, they were worried that uh, people were going to act badly. I mean, he was a wonderful artist, but of course people only remember the bad things that he did and they really were gruesome. I mean, not very nice, not very nice. So yes, Rolf Harris has died aged 93 and his funeral has taken place and I'm sure they won't tell us where he's buried because if people know, then I'm sure there will be protests and they will try to insist that his grave is removed. So, oh, very sad, very sad. He was from that era of Benny Hill, you remember Benny Hill? Yeah, 
uh, he was from that kind of era. So I don't know if maybe his mind was a bit, uh, a bit strange. And by the way, I'm not in any way saying that Benny Hill was a child abuser. I'm just saying that they came from the same generation. Benny Hill was a fantastic entertainer. Anyway, in his native Australia, people said that uh, um, they're very upset that he died. He was gravely sick. He was a big hit all across the English-speaking world, Rolf Harris. Yeah, so very sad, a very sad ending as well. Um, he had received loads of awards from the government and from the Queen, and of course, when it was discovered that he had abused children, these awards were very quickly removed from him. Uh, yeah, he had a few hit records here as well. I remember one of his songs was called Two Little Boys. Ooh, a bit creepy now when I think of it. But still... Uh, no one thought anything about the song. <laughs> I'm sure it was quite innocent. Um, yeah, he he lived in Berkshire, not far away from where I lived. He was kind of like a local celebrity, you know. Kids used to go to his house, knock on the door, and ask for his autograph. I didn't, but uh, yeah, really strange, isn't it? He was from Perth in Australia. And apparently he was a very famous swimmer before he uh, entered the world of arts. But uh, a household name. Everybody knew him. And, uh, yeah, sadly he's passed away. Uh, and uh, I'm sure many people will be pleased that he's passed away after the problems he's caused in some people's lives. And speaking of passing away. I see Tina Turner has passed away as well. Isn't that sad? I like Tina Turner. Um, oh, oh, what's love got to do? Got to do with it. Mm, yeah. Um, I'm looking at recent pictures of her. And she looks like a sweet old lady. Uh, although in the 80s and 90s, uh, she was a symbol of feminism and power, wasn't she? Yeah, Tina Turner, Ike and Tina Turner. I don't remember their earlier songs. I remember Private Dancer and What's Love Got to Do With It. She had a song with Eros Ramazzotti, didn't she? Well, I think everyone's had a song with Eros Ramazzotti. Didn't uh, Cher sing with him as well? Patsy Kensett, they were singing with Eros Ramazzotti. And that's another question, why everyone hates Eros Ramazzotti. I liked him, actually. I used his music when I was learning Spanish. Uh, but then I discovered everyone hated him. <laughs> so <laughs> whenever you ask anyone, what do you think of Eros Ramazzotti? You always get the same answer. And that is, oh, no, Eros Ramazzotti. No, I don't like him. Everyone says that. But uh, he wasn't that bad. He helped me learn Spanish with his music. Uh, and his concerts were very good, although a little bit strange sometimes. Uh, also, um, uh, when you're learning a language, you know, music is very, very important. So, yeah, Tina Turner, private dancer. Yeah, I'm not sure I can, I can mimic her voice. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, very sad, very sad. Right, that's it. So uh, I hope you enjoy your day. I'm off to make some soup. See you. Bye.